the world's most powerful particle accelerator. The Large Hadron Collider will reopen today after three years of being shut down for improvements. Currently, scientists are turning in their chairs as something intriguing seems to happen to the Large Hadron Collider, which continually leaves all thrilled. It is no secret that this machine holds immense power to unlock a realm beyond our imagination. Yet scientists at CERN were caught off guard when something intriguing was discovered using the collider. But it gets more interesting because this time around, Brian Cox revealed this strange discovery himself. And to make things more complex, the Mandela Effect is involved. What mystery has CERN discovered? And what does it do with the Mandela Effect? Let's find out. For scientists, the CERN's Large Hadron Collider is like a ticking time bomb on the brink of an explosive breakthrough in the science world. As it was born out of the massive collaboration of brilliant minds, the mighty machine has changed the rhythm of particle acceleration ever since it was created. Here, we are talking about the most powerful particle accelerator of all time, being made of a 27 k mile long ring of superconducting magnets, which is really massive. This is the Large Hadron Collider. It's 27 kilometers in circumference. It's the biggest scientific experiment ever attempted. The Large Hadron Collider is not just a particle accelerator. Still, it mirrors the result of a collective dream pursued in unity, even as it accelerates particles that are too little to see with the naked eye. Scientists had always known this was a particular machine. Still, recently, they've been shaken off their chairs by a strange event involving the Large Hadron Collider. It turns out that in the climax of the event, while scientists were carrying out a super important experiment with an intense energy level, they caught sight of something extraordinary which has sent ripples across the science world as it has raised many questions about the mystery of black holes and the Mandela Effect. In explaining this mysterious event, we find no other than Brian Cox, a great voice amongst scientists, taking the front seat as his announcement of this intriguing event seems to be making the headlines. Of course, this announcement involves the famous Large Hadron Collider, which is quite an interesting machine, as you will learn. The Large Hadron Collider is not only large, as its name implies, but it is the largest particle accelerator ever created that currently exists. Particle accelerators are machines that propel charged particles, invisible to the bare eye, into intensely high speeds and energy. It does this using electromagnetic fields, and all of these activities are visible through a clearly defined beam of light, which gets displayed. Particle accelerators are very useful for experiments in particle physics. That is why the Large Hadron Collider has proven invaluable to scientists since its creation, boasting many incredible achievements to its credit. One is the discovery of the Higgs boson, which highlights a massive breakthrough for scientists. The Higgs boson is an elementary particle, often called the God article. One reason for this is that it plays a crucial role in the standard model of particle physics. It has the mighty responsibility of giving mass to other elementary particles, which is why things have weight and don't all just zoom around at the speed of light, as quantum physics explains. However, the Higgs boson introduces a new field, other than the quantum field, into the situation. This new field is referred to as the Higgs field. Now, imagine the universe as a big, molasses-filled room. The Higgs field is like the molasses in the room, and the elementary particles are like bowling balls. These elementary particles, bowling balls, are said to make up all things, including us and everything in the universe. Still, these particles are not allowed to have mass following the laws of quantum electromagnetism, so this happens for them to have mass. In the molasses filled room with bowling balls, they get their mass by interacting with the big molasses. Here, the molasses, which involves an entirely new quantum field, experiences a trick or a spontaneous symmetry getting broken. This broken symmetry is usually present in theory, but is broken in the physical system. It is just like a pencil that stands on its teeth at the center of a table for a brief moment, perfectly symmetrical before it finally falls down, thus breaking the perfectly rotational symmetry as it chooses a particular direction to point to. The fact that this can happen without the law of nature changing with a predefined direction 
features the trick through which particles gain their masses without upsetting physics laws. Here, the bowling balls that move through the molasses more easily are said to have less mass, while the ones that get stuck more easily have more mass. So, that's kind of how the Higgs boson works. Particles interact with the Higgs field, giving them their mass. The Higgs boson was a theoretical particle for a long time, first proposed in the 1960s by Peter Higgs and Francois Englert, and several other physicists independently. However, it took until 2012 for scientists to finally discover it at the Large Hadron Collider, LHC, at CERN, near Geneva, Switzerland. At the Large Hadron Collider, scientists could detect a new particle that matched the predicted properties of the Higgs boson. The discovery of the Higgs boson was a significant breakthrough in physics, confirming a crucial part of the standard model and providing new insights into the fundamental nature of the universe. It also earned Higgs and Englert the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2013. Since its discovery, scientists have studied the Higgs boson in more detail to learn more about its properties and role in the universe. There's still much to know about this fascinating particle. Still, one thing is for sure. The Higgs boson is a vital piece of the puzzle that helps us understand how the universe works, thanks to the Large Hadron Collider. But how did the Large Hadron Collider come about? Let us take a trip to the very beginning, shall we? Actually, it first began in the aftermath of the Second World War. Scientists all over Europe decided to come together to establish what would later become the world's largest particle physics laboratory outside Geneva, Switzerland. If that isn't enough, it is the first post-war venture jointly carried out in Europe. The result is the gigantic CERN, a French acronym for the European Organization for Nuclear Research. The reason for creating this massive facility stems from a genuine desire to probe into what makes up our mighty universe and what laws of physics dictate how it behaves. Still, beyond that, CERN has also affected people's daily lives worldwide through the invention of essential tools like positron emission tomography scans and the World Wide Web, which have become a significant part of our lives today. Since its creation, CERN has become a hub for scientific breakthroughs, and trust us, this is no exaggeration. Currently, more than 10,000 scientists from about 100 countries troop into CERN annually to use its massive research facilities. Thus, when the Large Hadron Collider was created, it became clear that CERN was nothing short of a blessing to the world. One of the Large Hadron Collider's most outstanding abilities is its ability to smash protons together at incredibly high speeds, recreating conditions similar to those in the early universe. Well, this is no minor deal, as it means that scientists now have a way of understanding what happened during the Big Bang and recreating it for themselves. It is like man tapping into the magical power of creation. With the Large Hadron Collider playing out the conditions that existed moments after the Big Bang, Scientists can now tap into the mysteries of the beginning, mainly speculated before now. Yet more exciting things are on the way. The Large Hadron Collider boasts some of the best features and components, making it a marvel of engineering. Its many components work together to achieve its goal of smashing particles together at nearly the speed of light. One of these components is the beam pipe. This large vacuum chamber surrounds the proton beams as they circulate inside the LHC. Maintaining a near-perfect vacuum is essential to prevent the beams from interacting with anything other than what they're supposed to collide with. There are also accelerating cavities. These cavities use radio waves to boost the energy of the proton beams as they travel around the ring. The LHC has eight main accelerating sections, each containing several cavities. And now the exciting part. Another outstanding future of the Large Hadron Collider is its superconducting magnets. The LHC uses a combination of over 9,000 magnets to guide and focus the proton beams. The most important ones are the 1,232 dipole magnets, which are 15 meters long and bend the beams into a circular path. Other magnets, like quadrupoles and sextupoles, are used to focus and keep the beams stable. There are also the detectors, and the LHC has four main ones. They include ATLAS, CMS, ALICE, and LHCB. These massive instruments are designed to record the particles and energy released in the collisions. The data from these detectors is used by scientists to study the fundamental nature of matter and forces. Here, the cryogenic system also exists for a reason. To keep the magnets superconducting, 
which allows them to generate powerful magnetic fields without wasting energy, they must be chilled to a temperature of minus 271.25 degrees Celsius. This is achieved using a complex cryogenic system that circulates liquid helium throughout the LHC tunnel. As interesting as these components are, they are just some of the critical elements of the Large Hadron Collider. Each component plays a vital role in its operation, and the entire system is a testament to human ingenuity and the quest for knowledge. But the story is far from over. Scientists encountered something strange with the Large Hadron Collider when they thought they'd seen it all. Brian Cox is a famous name when it comes to particle physics. He is an English physicist and musician who is also a professor of particle physics at the University of Manchester's School of Physics and Astronomy. He is also the Royal Society Professor for Public Engagement in Science. Suppose there is one thing for which Brian Cox is known. In that case, it is his preoccupation as a presenter of science programs, especially on BBC's Radio 4. But that is not all about this brilliant mind. Brian Cox had once worked on the Atlas experiment wing of the Large Hadron Collider. He was suitable to learn about the recent strange event at CERN. And according to an announcement he recently made, something scary has been detected at CERN. Here, the intrigue is massive. Scientists at CERN are no longer only able to create the conditions after the Big Bang, but have gone further to make a mini Big Bang right here on Earth using the Large Hadron Collider. The process was achieved by smashing together lead ions instead of protons, and scientists are still thrilled by the results that have emerged. This unique, unparalleled feat achieved by CERN happened on the 7th of November, in a magical moment where the experiment created a whooping high temperature that was a million times hotter than our very own sun. Following the significant events, scientists at CERN have spent the following weeks studying the data deduced from the iron collisions and hope now to learn a ton of new information about the plasma of the universe a millionth of a second after this Big Bang which happened 13.7 billion years ago. After 13 years of smashing protons against each other to discover the hidden secrets of the universe, this is a massive breakthrough for scientists. But here is where a funny twist lies. While the recent events are a welcome development for scientists all around the globe, a danger has been found to loom over this achievement. This new experiment is no joke, as it uses a very high amount of energy that has never been humanly achieved before. Dealing with this kind of energy has only been theoretical before now. If we must be honest, no one really knows what the consequences of this may be. Since CERN came into existence, they have been known to practicalize the usage of these high energies that were only in theory in the past. Recently, the risks involved are becoming more glaring. Throughout history, a couple of terrible incidents have happened due to taking the kind of risk that CERN is currently taking. One of them is the case of a Russian scientist, Anatoly Bugorsky. In 1978, while working on a particle accelerator, Bugorsky received a direct dose of radiation to his head when a proton beam malfunctioned. This level of radiation should have been fatal, but well, he miraculously survived. He described seeing a flash brighter than a thousand suns, and experienced temporary facial paralysis and nausea. Doctors diagnosed him with radiation illness and predicted significant long-term damage. Though he survived, Bugorsky suffered some permanent injuries, including partial facial paralysis, hearing loss in one ear, and occasional seizures. However, he remarkably did not experience any significant cognitive decline or mental impairment. While we are thankful that Bugorsky survived this terrible incident, many are now. Looking towards CERN with fear, they carry out really wild experiments. However, it gets worse with a recent discovery made by scientists. Some scientists have recently complained that the activities of scientists at CERN are creating tiny black holes using the Large Hadron Collider. This, of course, is still a mere speculation and has not been proven yet. However, why don't we consider what black holes are? Black holes are some of the universe's most fascinating and mysterious objects. They are regions of space-time where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape their grasp. Imagine squeezing a massive star, many times heavier than our sun-sun, into a tiny space smaller than a city. That's the essence of a black hole. Black holes form when massive stars die. When a star runs out of fuel and collapses, its immense gravity overcomes the outward pressure of nuclear fusion, causing it to implode. If the core is massive enough, 
more than three times the sun's sun's mass, it can't rebound and continues collapsing into a black hole. This explanation goes mainly for massive black holes, but what about the tiny black holes that CERN might be creating? How dangerous can it possibly be? According to the scientists in CERN, the Large Hadron Collider has not been used to create any tiny black hole. Still, the possibility of this happening cannot be denied. Scientists at CERN have, therefore, admitted that the Large Hadron Collider might possibly be able to create a tiny black hole that will be massive in terms of scientific knowledge. When considering the dangers, CERN scientists have assured us that any tiny black hole created would not harm the Earth or human life. This is because the little black holes will be too small and unstable to endure for a long time. Hence, the prediction is that it will disappear as quickly as it was created, thus maintaining the balance of things. Well, this is just a prediction. Scientists at CERN are convinced that the chance of anything happening otherwise is relatively low. This assurance, however, has not stopped the public from being tense about the event. But it gets more interesting with talk about the Mandela effect also coming up. What do the Large Hadron Collider and the events at CERN have to do with the Mandela Effect? First, what is the Mandela Effect? The Mandela Effect is where many people share a false memory of an event or detail that contradicts established facts. It's named after Nelson Mandela, the former president of South Africa, because many people vividly recall him dying in prison during the 1980s, when in reality, he passed away in 2013 after serving as president. The core of the Mandela Effect is the widespread occurrence of false memories shared by many people. These memories can be anything from historical events and pop culture icons to everyday objects and brand logos. What makes the Mandela Effect so intriguing is the vividness and confidence with which people hold on to these false memories. They often recall specific details and emotions associated with the event, making it even more challenging to distinguish from actual memories. Some of the most common Mandela Effect examples include Shazam versus Kazam. Many people remember the genie movie starring Sinbad being called Shazam, but the title is Kazam. The Jiffy Lube logo is also an excellent example of the Mandela Effect. The Jiffy Lube logo is often misremembered as having a red circle with a blue star in the center. In contrast, the logo has a blue circle with a yellow star. The exact cause of the Mandela Effect remains a mystery, but several potential explanations exist. Exposure to inaccurate information through familiar sources like media or conversations can create and spread, create and spread false memories. Memory is not a perfect recording device. Our brains can sometimes fill in gaps or distort details, leading to false memories. Again, certain events or details might become ingrained in our collective consciousness through movies, books, or general cultural references, creating a false sense of familiarity and memory. All of these are natural explanations of the Mandela Effect, but what do the Large Hadron Collider and the experiment at CERN have to do with the Mandela Effect? Recently, many have complained that the numerous experiments conducted at CERN might be distorting reality and causing ripples in what makes up reality. What does this mean? Well, according to those who hold this argument, the experiments, especially those with the Large Hadron Collider, are opening cracks to parallel universes and are therefore mixing up memories of people with their counterparts in parallel universes, thus resulting in the Mandela Effect. Of course, there is currently no evidence of parallel universes, as this argument implies. However, due to the stance of quantum mechanics, we are made to understand that there is a possibility that they exist. However, we might want to look at the string theory to understand this phenomenon. String theory is a theory in quantum physics that supports the existence of parallel universes through some of its concepts. String theory is a fascinating and complex attempt to unify the two great pillars of modern physics, quantum mechanics and general relativity. Instead of picturing fundamental particles as point-like objects, it proposes that they are tiny, one-dimensional strings vibrating in a higher dimensional space. These vibrations determine the particle's properties, just like the different notes a guitar string can play. However, to accommodate the different vibration modes and explain all the forces, string theory requires additional spatial dimensions beyond the familiar three of space and one of time, thus supporting the existence of parallel universes. These extra dimensions are considered incredibly tiny and curled up, 
making them undetectable in our everyday world. There's more. In string theory, one of the most well-known concepts is the multiverse concept. Some versions of the theory propose that extra dimensions could be vast and diverse, containing a multitude of different brains or membranes. Each brain could harbor its own universe with its unique laws of physics and constants. This vast cosmic landscape, the multiverse, would encompass our universe as one among many. Now, while all the concepts in string theory are still not proven, scientists seem to be looking toward a new direction for evidence of parallel universes. Here, gravity comes into play. Gravity, the force that keeps your feet planted on the ground and causes apples to fall from trees, is a fundamental interaction in the universe. It's an invisible force that attracts any two objects with mass. The more mass an object has, the stronger its gravitational pull. But the mystery here is this. Compared to the electromagnetic, strong, and weak nuclear forces, gravity is feeble. However, its long-range effect makes it dominate on celestial scales. Because of this, scientists are beginning to think that there is more to gravity than just keeping our feet on the ground. The question is, what if gravity is linked to multiple dimensions? And what if gravity is actually sipping into these extra dimensions? A deeper probing into this mystery might yield astonishing discoveries. Hence, CERN is heavily investigating. Here, the point is that if there are indeed parallel universes and the experiments at CERN are opening up, cracking them, and causing the Mandela effect, then a significant disruption of the balance in the cosmos is bound to happen if nothing is done to rectify the situation. However, before anything else, the truth about parallel universes must first be discovered. That's it for today's video. What do you think about all that has been discovered? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, ensure to like, share, and subscribe for more.